the more we tell ourselves it's not okay, there's this, this pull within your body, this, this, this at war with your own self, instead of just saying, okay, I feel this way. I'm completely uncomfortable. Yeah. Maybe I wish the circumstance didn't happen at all, but it did happen. I don't have control over that, but I do have control over my choice. And my first choice is be aware of my emotions so I can make choices that show my character of respect, of kindness, of determination. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the People Hum interview series. This is your host, Neha, at People Hum. People Hum is an end-to-end, one-view, integrated human capital management automation platform. The winner of the 2019 Global Cody Award for HCM that's specifically built for crafted employee experiences and the future of work. We run the People Hum blog and channel that receives more than 200,000 visitors a year and we also publish several interviews with well-known names globally every month. We have with us today Sarah Westbrook, the founder of 3E Emotional Development. Sarah is an emotional resilience strategist and helps people rebound from tough emotions triggered by challenging circumstances. She believes it's the key to professional and personal success. According to Sarah, emotions affect productivity, performance, relationships, morale, and mental and emotional well-being. The several emotional triggers that one experiences throughout their day, when not validated or recognized, affect your team's choices and subsequently your bottom line. For the past 15 years, Sarah has been providing strategies, resources, and a choice-making formula to guide leaders and their teams to achieve the skill of emotional awareness, emotion management, and emotional resilience. We're so thrilled to be getting into conversation with her today. Sarah, thank you so much for giving us your time. and We're so thrilled that you're here with us today. Well, thank you so much, Neha, for having me. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Sarah. So jumping right into the interview, Aside from the, being the founder at 3E Emotional Development, you've been a professional speaker, consultant, and emotional resilience strategist for the past 12 years. So we'd love to hear about your experiences and the work that you do. Oh my goodness. Well, where do we start? Uh, the Should we start with how I even got started? <laughs> this Absolutely. is the Coles Note episode. version. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, I didn't actually set out to be a professional speaker that came along the way I was three years old when I told my mom I said mom I'm gonna be a singer by the time I was eight I was taking singing lessons by the time I was 11 I was a paid performer traveling singing working at a dinner theater you know just loving performing and and sharing and and music and Around the age of 11, I actually started to notice that my world around me was really shifting and changing and that there was different challenges that I didn't notice before. Um, one of them was my parents started to argue. I started to really be aware of them having conflict with their opinions and their ideas and their beliefs. Eventually they got separated, they got back together, they got separated, they got back together. And eventually they got divorced. And that was a whole slew of emotions as a preteen and uh, trying to navigate all of them was not a simple task because they're so big emotions and can be so overwhelming. And then around the same age and around the same time, there was this one student in my class that was constantly rude or disrespectful or just like a look across the room like, Oh, why are you here? And so then that triggered more emotion. So I had stuff going on at home. I had stuff going on at school. And then in my performing life, I would go into competitions. Sometimes I'd do really well and get great feedback. Sometimes they'd be like, nope, you didn't make it. You didn't make the cut. This is all. The and so all of this going on in my life, the common denominator was it would trigger emotions. And so when I started to look at building confidence and being able to bounce back and ultimately move through challenging times, I really had to look at, well, what are the emotions that are making it really difficult? And my mom, being a really wise woman that she, she was and is, signed me up for every single character development leadership 
course, Sina, that you can even imagine, okay? I did not want to go to a, not a one of them. <laughs> because as a preteen and a teen, I was like, I don't need that. You know when they, they, that saying, it takes a village to raise a child? As a child, you think your village is just more friends. <laughs> you know, like, well, if I have more friends, I'll be fine. If, I, if, I, if they like me, I'll be fine. If this is in yeah. this, if I have more stuff, I'll be fine. I'll be more confident if I have that. And realizing now that my mom realized my village couldn't just be about friends. It had to be about mentors, educators, coaches, people who had more wisdom. So when I look back, all the courses that she put me in as a preteen and a teen to help me develop a growth mindset and to help me really look at what was beyond the circumstance was emotions and how would I navigate those was really what I needed that I didn't know I needed. And so the outcome of me really diving into my emotions was that I became more confident over time right? Of course, it's a journey. And I'm still on the journey. You know, I do believe when we talk about resilience and confidence and mental health, and you know, it's really a muscle that we have to keep working, working out. But she was giving me tools and putting me in front of people that had tools. So fast forward now, I'm 19 years old, I've done these courses. I'm still doing courses. I, I, I love looking at mindset, but I also love singing. And I got into public speaking because one of my teachers said I'd be good at it. But picture that these three worlds are really separate. They're not, they're not yes, infused. Yes. And then it happened. I was singing at a mall. And a principal came up to me after I was done and said, could you sing at my school? And just let the students well. ask you questions about music, about, you know, how you got to sing at certain places. And I was like, okay, mm -hmm. super nervous. <laughs> like I was so nervous. I was like butterflies, but I was like, feel the fear and do it anyway. Lean into the emotion, but choose courage. So I went and I sang and they asked me questions. And all of a sudden their questions were not about how did you get to sing at this event? It was, what's your home life like? Wow. What challenges have you experienced? And so then I was pulling out of my back pocket lessons that I had learned along the way. And so that became the moment, if I look back, that a seed was planted that there was more than just the music for me and that there was more than just the speaking for me that these worlds could, could work together. And, uh, you know, to this day, we even when I'm doing a presentation that's for corporate and they want to add in a song since I'm a songwriter I can write to go with the message that I'm talking about you know when it's the the appropriate feel but that's how it really started for me was with youth and then I started to work and share with educators and I still do and and parents and I still do and now also employees and just really that all branched from my personal journey that I thought I was just going to be a singer, not just be, I thought that's what I was going to do. That I was going to be a singer. Like yeah. that's it. Yeah. And then it's amazing if you're open that life will have twists and turns and changes. And sometimes the detours in life can be the best part of the tour. Cause I would never, if you were, if I was 11 years old and you're asking me, are you going to be a speaker that shares strategies and personal stories about your own struggles and triumphs and I'd be like no <laughs> and now I, I I love it that's absolutely wonderful and it's such a funny thing Sarah emotions consume so much of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis and yes. yet nobody teaches us how to navigate our way through them so I believe the work that you're doing right now is extremely commendable because this is something that a lot of people need to understand. And they just sort of need guidance from somebody who can talk about what their journey has been like and bring their insights to the table. That's wonderful. And it's really great listening about how you did not know where you would end up and then life just happened while you had other plans. And that's just like, it's really amazing. 
Yeah, it's, it is. And I think that oftentimes we do try, and I have moments even now, you try to connect all the dots in the future. I'm going to do this and I'm going to meet this person. It's going to lead to this and then I'm going to get that. Whereas then life's like, ha ha, you're over here now. <laughs> you're over here and you're over here. And then it's really in reflection that we can look back and connect the dots and be like, oh, I got into that because it led to this because it, I met this person and it led me here. So being open to that journey uh, it is a lot, though, about knowing that there's going to be uncomfort in the journey because those emotions that come up of uncertainty, of I made a mistake, now I feel embarrassed. I yeah. feel frustrated because it's not going my way. Or I feel sad or I feel happy that this – that the journey has a lot of emotions. And if we really yeah. look deep, it's often the emotions that we fear more than the journey itself. Absolutely, absolutely. And I feel like a great part of looking forward to anything that can happen is to, to an extent just having the sort of confidence in ourselves and knowing that no matter what happens, you know, we can wing it. I feel like just having that feeling in itself is a very big deal. And it's amazing the work that you do in that area. So uh, moving on and related to what we just spoke about, mm -hmm. you've mentioned that you help people rebound from tough emotions triggered by challenging circumstances. So this past year has been the very definition of the same. So in that respect and as a coach, how would you say leaders should approach the coming year at the workplace? It's okay not to be okay. Let's start there. Absolutely. Let's start with it's okay to feel and it's okay to have a wide range of emotions. You don't need to tell yourself to stop feeling because that's only counterproductive. So this is the example that I give. So picture, picture you're feeling a big emotion. So, and this could be, this could be anyone uh, or you're, you're overwhelmed. You feel anxious. You feel frustrated. You feel irritated. Someone comes to you, whether it's a colleague a partner, a friend, a family member, and even out of love, they say to you, stop feeling that emotion. Sina, you don't need to feel that emotion. You're overreacting. Stop feeling it. Do you find you instantly stop? You're like, oh, good. I'm glad you told me to stop because that's exactly what I needed to hear. Right. Um, and, and say that's that person's go-to response to your emotions. Stop feeling that. You don't need to feel that. You're overreacting. Get over it. So now what's happening? Do you hear that it's okay to feel? No. Do you hear that it's not okay not to feel okay? Do you feel more connected to that person? Or does the opposite happen? Do yeah. you feel like since they're not honoring your emotion by giving you space, that's not okay to feel? Yes. Maybe now you have an adverse effect. You're not just feeling overwhelmed. Now you're feeling shame, guilt, or even anger for feeling that emotion. Yes, yes. Disconnection from the person, and you don't feel seen. Absolutely. And one thing that us human beings love is feeling seen, heard, recognized, validated. And we are emotional beings whether we like it or not. Whether we are comfortable with it or not, we have a wide range of emotions. And this year has brought that to the forefront in a big way. And so now let's take that same, that same circumstance. You're feeling a big emotion. You feel anxious. You feel overwhelmed. You feel irritated. And someone comes to you, a colleague, partner, friend, family member, and they say to you, I can see you're feeling a big feeling. It's okay. I felt big feelings too. It's natural. Now, how do you feel? Much better. So what's really interesting is now all of a sudden, and they haven't said anything. They haven't tried to fix or change it, which our brain does want to do. So, and I have to really work on this. Like this is for me personally, because I do like to come and be like, oh, let me quickly fix and change that for you. But what if, it wasn't about trying to fix and change other people's emotions and moving them from one emotion to quickly another. It was about leaning into the discomfort and holding out space 
for them to feel whatever they're feeling. What if that was the way not only to help that person feel seen and heard, but actually to calm and process and be like, yeah, you do see me because I do feel a big emotion and I don't need you to fix or change it. And I don't need you to make it anything other than just uh, let me feel. And then what if we applied that same strategy to ourselves? Because how many times, Sina, have you had this moment? And I ask this in every presentation. It doesn't matter what age I'm working with. Ever found yourself doing this? Don't be anxious. I shouldn't be anxious. Come on, Sarah, stop it. You shouldn't be so angry. You shouldn't be irritated. Stop with the irritation. You shouldn't. If I were to tell you, you'd be surprised how many times a day I do that. <laughs> yeah. And this is the interesting part. You love when people, I bet you, you love when people allow you space to just feel. Of course, of course, yes. In a healthy way, right? Just to feel, just yes. to be. But then when you tell yourself not to feel an emotion, are you giving yourself that space? Of course not. <laughs> and are you telling your body it's okay to feel? Or by telling yourself, stop feeling I shouldn't be, are you saying it's not okay to feel? The latter. And at, I bet your body's hearing, well, it's not okay to feel that feeling. Yeah. Maybe I can feel other feelings, but that feeling, that one's not allowed. Yes. Yes. And so what if we practiced being aware of our emotions and giving space to it, literally starting with telling your own self it's okay to feel. We can't decide what other people do with our emotions, but we can start within ourselves. And I do believe that when we talk about building confidence, resilience, yes, support is huge from, from, from people. From uh, That's why we're on this planet, to support one another. We also have to support ourselves. And that can be as simple as, I'm allowed to feel. It's okay to feel. So now instead of when I'm feeling nervous and anxious, instead of me saying, Sarah, I shouldn't be feeling nervous, don't be nervous, don't be nervous, which is what I used to do before every <laughs> performance or presentation, I start doing this now. I'll put my hands somewhere. Like it could be on my shoulders, could be on my stomach. Some people will do the back of their neck or their forehead or just you know your thighs, wherever feels right for you. And just start with, it's okay to feel. I'm allowed to feel. What would that change? And then I think the fear sometimes then becomes in, well, what if I really let myself feel? Will it, be, will it be able to control? Like, what if I just leaned into it? But what I have found from working with people is the opposite happens. Even with my son, he's eight years old. If I say to him, his name's Kai, if I say Kai, and this happened just the other day. He was super nervous, super anxious. I was taking him. An arena just opened up. We got into a different zone. We could go, he could go skating, but I couldn't watch because no spectators are allowed due to the pandemic and the situation yeah. we are now finding ourselves in. Mm -hmm. Now he's feeling nervous and anxious. He doesn't know anyone there. And he's like, mom, my stomach hurts because oftentimes we have a physical reaction to an emotion. Yeah. I said, Kai, yeah. put your hands right on your stomach. And I'm driving. He's in the back seat. And I said, I just want you to start with it's okay to feel. And he's in the back. He's like, it's okay to feel. It's okay to feel. I said, I want you to tell your body it's allowed to feel anxious and that you feel it in your stomach. So I, all I wanted him to do was feel it instead of me doing this. Don't be nervous and anxious. You've been here before. You love skating. This is going to be fun. <laughs> right? I just want him to start there. And then to teach him you can be brave even though you feel nervous and anxious. It's just your body saying, oh, look alive, here we go. How can we use those emotions as opposed to those emotions using us and either stopping doing something we really love to do or believe in or reacting in a way that's actually harmful to ourselves and others? Absolutely. And I feel like for most, it's very important to know that 
everything anything can happen right the next moment you, you can never predict what can happen so it's very important to rely on your own emotions before you seek that validation from something or someone else and i feel like that is a skill that everybody should have because that's going to take you places that's the only thing that matters in the end and if anything the pandemic has taught us that so that's absolutely very insightful well and you've brought up a super valid point when you just said that Because I mm-hmm. think that if we keep telling ourselves not to feel or outside people are telling us not to feel even with the best intentions in mind. Yeah. Even with love because sometimes people do they're saying it out of yes, love. Yes. I know I've caught myself and then I'm like, yes. "Oh, Sarah, okay, just let them feel their feeling." <laughs> yeah. That if we take a step back and we say, "I trust you know what you're feeling." Yeah. Exactly. Isn't that a way to connect it is. to confidence? because otherwise if i tell like even my son no you're not feeling that way you shouldn't feel that way picture now he's 25 years old he's say at an interview okay he's at a work interview he's feeling nervous and anxious the same thing he felt at 8 years old before going onto the ice cuz he didn't know anyone because mom couldn't watch cuz dad wasn't there what and what if he hears my voice as a 25 year old saying kai tell your body it's okay to feel you're allowed to feel nervous take a deep breath move with nervous move with anxious but choose courage Absolutely. wouldn't that be a way of building trust within yourself and confidence yes yes definitely definitely and i feel like that's something that all of us should remember because it's absolutely essential to feel that way to know that anything can happen and you have the control to change that situation without denying it without saying that this is not what i actually feel i feel like it's very important to acknowledge that this is exactly how i feel but that it's okay and i feel like that could yes. make a world of a difference wonderful so we'll be going and then we go into companies and that's the same thing right like yes, allowing yes. people to feel and process you're actually being really helpful with their Absolutely. mental health Yes, because yes. then they're not at war with their own feelings. <laughs> also, and I also feel like this is not a one-time thing. I feel like this is an approach that if you inculcate, you also tend to rub off on others. For example, you hold this view today, and you're talking to me about that, and you're talking to so many of our listeners and viewers about that. Imagine this view getting rubbed on off off onto other people, and them thinking from this worldview. So I feel like that creates a world of a difference because. that thought stays a part of every person that even considers it for a minute and that can make a huge difference because again it's not a one time thing it's how you interact in your daily situations and how that shapes you as a person absolutely and it is very much a muscle and an exercise which is good news mm-hmm. because of course we're all going to mess up and we're all going to fall off track sometimes <laughs> or make a mistake but i like to say that life's not about perfection You yeah, know, absolutely. anything in life is not about perfection, but it is about reflection and redirection. So, being able to reflect and say, "Oh, nailed that. Loved that. I totally <laughs> made a great respectful choice." Ah, not so much there. Nope, not so much there. And then we forgive ourselves and those around us, we bounce back with the lesson learned. We redirect and say, "Okay, but this is this is what I've learned. This is what I want to do differently." And I say, um, "Perfection it's not about perfection but it is about reflection and i want to make really clear let's not make reflection turn into obsession that's yes. easy to do i've been there not helpful <laughs> no forgiving <laughs> and then re- redirect don't stay in the reflection <laughs> redirect absolutely so uh moving on you've mentioned that many emotional triggers can affect our functioning So at the same time many of these triggers are inevitable because they're a part of our day to day occurrences. So in that uh, light how do you advise one can maintain that balance between their personal and professional being? Yes, well and I mean this is going to be different for everybody. Yes. I and I think you've hit the nail on the head. You're not going to avoid emotions. You know, you're not going to avoid yes. the things that trigger you. Being aware of the things that trigger you is great. because then you can you can have the um an awareness of okay that is going to be something that does have this emotion happen yeah and i think that the big part is being able to move with 
and through emotions so that you can still show up as the person you want to be respectful, determined, kind, compassionate, even though you feel sometimes overwhelmed, anxious, nervous, scared that you it's it's really about training your brain to think and act beyond tough emotions so that you can make character-based choices mm -hmm. i think that when we look at leaders or we look at someone we admire or we look at a choice that someone made and we really look up to it that person was probably feeling a slew of emotions but they chose to make a determined courageous respectful choice in spite of feeling angry annoyed or sad you know, and, and, and when I come up with strategies, it's about that. So the choice making formula you mentioned in the beginning is really about how do we work the muscle, how we react, what we choose to believe, who we choose to become. And that's where I want us to focus our energy. And like I said, it's a muscle. It's a muscle to be able to say, yeah. oh, I'm, oh, I feel that big emotion. But that's not where I want to make my choice from. But I'm going to say it's okay to feel. I'm going to honor my healthy ways to move through. So I'm a big believer in when you're honoring your ways to move through emotions, so I call that emotional management, write down a list of things that help you. And, and have that beside your desk. Have that beside your mirror. Put it in your sock drawer. Making sure that you have strategies before you even need them is really important. Because in the height of an emotional state, your brain will forget what, it, what helps. Whether it's deep breathing, talking to someone, screaming into a pillow, <laughs> you know, counting to 10. I find I twirl my hair a lot. I have a song in my head, especially as a parent when you feel like you're being pulled in every direction <laughs> lately. And I'll just be like, I'm, I'm managing my emotion. <laughs> we also call it self-regulating, right? And so... Yeah. I think that making a list and having that is helpful when you are triggered. You're like, okay, I have something that I can do with this emotion. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I feel like that's wonderful and all of us need that. Because for a lot of people now what's happening is that their personal and professional life is mixing up because most of them are working out of home and they're not able to balance their schedule. Oh, yeah. So I feel like what you just mentioned is definitely going to help a lot of our viewers and listeners. And not particularly the kind of people that are working from home, but I also feel like it's a very important life skill to have because sometimes it's very, very important to just compartmentalize and just be organized in here. So that's amazing. Absolutely. And I'm a big fan of visual reminders because it helps me, you know, like to-do lists. I like to see them. But I also really, I, yes. I'm big into making daily intentions. I even post it on my Instagram. People do them with me. Like I'll post it in my story what my daily intention mm -hmm. is, and then I'll ask people what theirs are and then share it. So that we have a visual reminder, and our brain does really like that. And so, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if you write it out, at least it's there. And you can, and even on a subconscious level, you're picking it up. Definitely. So while we're looking at the individual, it is essential that for overall growth, we focus on strengthening team relationships and communication as well. And that's something that you hold expertise in. So how would you say that we begin to approach this? Communication is really an art. If you, you think about it. often we talk to people the way we want to talk to people as opposed to the way they hear something. And I think this is in any relationship <laughs> is really kind of being observant as to what the other person does and how they hear information. I think if we got a little bit curious, a little bit more curious, I think curiosity mm -hmm. is a great character trait to have when we're talking about relationships, we're talking about problem solving. And when we're talking about emotions, get curious, watch, because as a team, when we are working together, there's going to be lots of emotions. And you're, you're different people that have had different upbringings or watch different movies, listen to different music. And that can be a real asset if we choose to be curious about what's the other person needing. How are they communicating? What if I mirrored a little bit of that? Could that would that connect with them? And so that, to me, curiosity, I can't highlight it enough. 
in relationships and within yourself and within your own emotions and other people's emotions is so beneficial for team. Even when I'm working with someone and th there's a reaction to something, if I, and then it might trigger an emotion in me. So then if I just purely react, we can be like way up in emotional reaction land where no one's figuring anything out. But if I take a step back and I'm really aware of my emotion and then I get curious about their emotion, I can be like, oh, I think they really did not hear what I was saying the way I intended it. So now I have the ability to shift gears. I have ability to drive. But if I'm not aware of my own emotion and I'm not aware of their emotion and I don't know how to manage my emotion, I can't drive any sort of ship or turn any, any conversation around yeah, because, yeah. right, it just becomes reactive and then resentful as opposed to, well, what if it's not, what if it's not just been heard the right way? What if they didn't mean for it to be offensive. What, just what if, what if I got really curious about what they said, what I said, and now the emotions that are happening. And that takes a lot of strength because I think that we, we love being right. I mean, like the human brain loves it. Right. <laughs> and we, uh, we don't, always want to be curious about emotions because they can be so uncomfortable. So we don't want to necessarily lean into them because our body's saying, no, 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 lean away from them. But now I'm saying, no, lean into it, lean into it. And that's going to be helpful. Well, that's against what a lot of people have done. And now it's like doing the opposite and saying, no, it's going to be really beneficial, not just for you personally, but for the relationships in your team and for your family. And for your friends, I guess. Absolutely. And I feel like now that people have started working from home, there's been a lot of communication gap anyway, because it's not how it used to be. So I feel like it is time now more than ever to actually reconnect with your teams and understand what your employees want. So that's wonderful. Absolutely. And, and, and make it okay. You know, to, to, you know, maybe you be the, if you're with a team, you be the first one to be vulnerable and actually say, I'm feeling really anxious about this right now because this isn't comfortable. Absolutely. You know, just saying that can actually do a lot for another person. Absolutely. I find that a lot of people, when they hear someone's story and they see that there's vulnerability, they can connect because even if we have different circumstances, Right? We live in different parts of the world. We are connected because we've all felt angry, sad, happy, annoyed, overwhelmed, excited, <laughs> confused, embarrassed. And when people are like, you have too? Yes, yes, absolutely. Right? <laughs> yes, yes. And I feel like uh, talking about what somebody is going through is every single person's responsibility. Say, for example, there are two people who are working together and the employee is scared of talking about it to their leader. And let's say the leader has something in their mind and they're too scared of talking about it with their employee because they're not sure how it will be received. All of that can be avoided if they just talk and understand how it will be received. Because at the end of the day, we have a certain perceptions of people and we go there with certain preconceived notions. And that's often not the case. So I feel like communication is definitely the key to solving it all out. And you never know, it might even bring you closer. Right. The, the big part that we have to move through is the fear that can stop yeah. us. Like when I look at any, any choice that I am struggling to make or a choice I made that I'm not proud of, I always mm -hmm. look at what emotion was I feeling? What emotion am I feeling that's having me not have that really important conversation? And so then if I could practice being really aware of that emotion and managing it and knowing that it doesn't have to go away for me to still choose courage, determination, and kindness. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a, a big part of it, that you don't have to not feel something in order to be courageous. No, you feel it, but then you choose Courage, you know, just like I'm sure we've all been feeling irritated, but still treated someone with kindness. Yes, yes. And I feel like a lot of this comes down to what you end up choosing. And that's the most important thing of all. And what yes. you end up choosing is also, of course, 
determined by what your thoughts are what is the general direction that you tend to think in so all of this just sort of come full circle and it's wonderful to see how that happens and with that we've come to the last question of the interview sara do you have a quote that defines your feeling the best way about the future of work workplace and you challenges are chapters of our life and not our whole mm -hmm. story wow that's amazing and knowing that those challenging chapters mm -hmm. are going to trigger big emotions and it's okay and practicing yeah. what you do with those emotions and honoring them is what ultimately will help you bounce back and build confidence and connection with yourself and those around you because you're enough and you matter Absolutely. and the people it's around like you matter you know it's just this big it's this big um, circle you know i feel like life is very much you know we're rejuvenating ourselves so that we can keep giving we're giving so we can rejuvenate ourselves and if we we really looked at it like uh, that's you know that circle of life i guess is what you know <laughs> but i do feel like that even when it comes to energy and connection absolutely and it's wonderful to see how the two words it's okay this makes everything so much better because it's all about accepting how things are before you can actually proceed to deal with them you've hit the nail on the head that the more we tell ourselves it's not okay there's this this pull within your body this 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 at war with your own self instead of just saying okay i feel this way i'm completely uncomfortable yeah maybe i wish the circumstance didn't happen at all but it did happen i don't have control over that but i do have control over my choice and my first choice Absolutely. is be aware of my emotions so i can make choices that show my character of respect of kindness of determination okay. that was a wonderful conversation sarat was so warm and i feel so good right now and i'm sure that our viewers and listeners do too thank you so much for being me here me too i love chatting with you <laughs> us too us too thank you so much for being here with us today and giving us your time and more importantly for giving us your insight that was absolutely wonderful and we enjoyed it thoroughly Well thank you so much it was an absolute pleasure to be part of the conversation today so thank you for thinking of me thank you sara it's a pleasure